This is the Keychron K7 Low Profile Mechanical Keyboard. In this video, I'm going to tell you why this is now my new favorite keyboard. Let's get into it. One of my favorite purchases since I started working from home is my mechanical keyboard. Mechanical keyboards allow you to customize your keyboard not only for aesthetic reasons, so it can match your setup and personality, but also match your typing styles, whether it be for gaming or for typing. So gamers tend to want the least resistance, so a lot of them you choose linear switches. Typists tend to want that tactile feedback when they type, so when they, uh, you know, they so they lean towards this tactile or clicky type of keyboards. My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. So one of the first purchases that I made at the start of this pan start of this pandemic was this guy. This is the Keychron K2. It's a 75% mechanical keyboard that's both wired and Bluetooth. It has a dedicated switch to switch between Windows and Mac layouts. Uh, this particular model has white backlit. Other than size, the specs are pretty much the same with this guy. This is the Keychron K7. This is a 65% mechanical keyboard and is a low and is low profile. This particular model has brown optical switches, and I'm not going to get into too much of the differences between the different types of switches, but on my K2, it had red linear switches. It had no clicky feel, right? If I want a very tactile clicky feel, I would get blue switches. What I have here on this keyboard are the brown switches. Brown switches are tactile but they are not as tactile or clicky as blue switches. I would say they are somewhere in between red and blue switches. There are a lot of other type of colors with different amounts of resistance, tactility, and even sound to really customize that typing feel to match your preference. In this video, I'm gonna go over how this keyboard functions and feels compared to the Keychron K2. And because it's a low profile keyboard, I'm also gonna compare it to another low profile keyboard my first generation Apple wireless keyboard. So let's take a quick look at this keyboard. This is a 65% keyboard size. That refers to the size compared to a full size keyboard. So this has five rows of keys compared to my K2, which is a 75% keyboard that has six rows of keys, but I'll do a comparison between these two keyboards in a moment. Let's take a quick look quickly around the back here. Um, here you'll have the two different switches. This this switch right here is Bluetooth off or cable. So I can plug this into the USB-C cable, which is right there. Uh, the port is right there. And then I can switch between Windows, Android, or Mac and iOS. So that's very similar to other Keychron keyboards. Again, this is the USB-C port. And this is the LED light as far as its indication of mainly battery life or connectivity. So if this is running out of batteries, this will start blinking red. Once you're fully charged, this will be in green, so on and so forth. And then on the bottom, you have the different uh, steppers. So yeah, there's two levels of uh, how you how you prefer your keyboard to be. So uh, actually three levels, flat, medium, and then all the way up, right? Higher. So I have it, have it all the way up and that's just kind of the way I like to use my keyboard, at least this particular keyboard. Now moving on to the functions of the keyboard. Now this has to do more with this being a 65% keyboard, but you see up here, I have my media keys here. It's combined with the numeric pad and the function keys are right next to it. So for example, I have my volume up and down here, but it's sharing together with F11, F12, and of course the regular keys is the minus, equal, plus these two keys right here. So in order for me to access the volume, I have to press the function key down and then go up and down on the volume here. And of course, if I wanna access the other media keys, I have to press the function key and then the corresponding functions here. I can change the brightness of the keyboard by hitting function and five or six, so I can bring it all the way down, bring it all the way up. And then 
to change the pattern of the uh, backlit. Actually, in my Keychron K2, there was a dedicated button just to change the backlit here. It's the delete button by default, but if I hit function, the delete here, it changes the pattern. And some of them are based on key presses, and some of them are just uh, random patterns that they do. So I can cycle through the different patterns here. Now, if I want to access the function keys here, I would hit F2 and then hit the function keys. And so whatever you have your function keys programmed to, you have to use the F2, well, function two button, and then those, the corresponding button. Now there are other features, or now there are other key combinations that you can use with the function two key. For example, if I just want to turn off the backlit altogether, I can just hit function two, and then the delete button or the, the pattern light button, the LED button here, right? And if I want to turn it back on, and then I would do that. Now, the other thing to look at is these three keys, and this is the pretty much the same on the K2, is if I hit the function and one of those keys, this allows me to switch between the three different uh, devices. So right now I have it on the first one, so this would be function Q, that, but it's already set on there. So one of the things that I have to get used to, and I wouldn't say it's an annoyance, but it's really something you just have to get used to, is using that function key. So if you haven't checked out my Mac uh, OS shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts video, check it out in the description below or in the card up here. But one of the things that I said that you could do is, you know, use the media key, hit the option key, and just say, if I did option and then volume up, that would take you to the system preferences. Well, now I have to hit function, option, and then volume up and that takes me to the system preferences. So it's an extra key that I have to press. Another thing that I like to do is, a lot of times I like to do command, you know, command tab lets you switch between applications, but within an application, you can do command tilde, and that just switches you between windows within the same application. But I can't do that now because that's really command escape. So now I have to hit function, command, and escape, and that switches me between the different applications. So that's something you just have to get used to. It's kind of the price you pay for just having a smaller layout or a smaller keyboard size. So now we'll do a quick comparison between my old K2 keyboard and the new K7 keyboard. The K2, of course, is a 75% keyboard and this is a 65% keyboard. So you can see the extra row of keys. This is where the media and the function keys are. Here it's combined with the numeric keys. And then we have the dedicated LED switcher, so I can switch through the different patterns. And here I have to hit the function key to get through the different patterns. One thing that I'll note here is these aren't the original keys here. It came with a similar kind of gray color here. I just switched them out. I bought some new ones to really customize my keyboard. And that's one of the beauties of having a mechanical keyboard. You can really customize it to your own needs. I may buy some low profile keys for this keyboard, but um, I'm still deciding that on that right now. Again, one of the nice things about having a 75% and the dedicated media keys here is I don't have to hit the function keys. I can just hit these media keys right away, do some shortcut combinations. Here again, I have to hit the function key to do, to do all the media keys here. But of course, the nice thing about having a 65% keyboard is the thinness and the compactness. So let's pull these up here and we can compare the kind of the size comparison here. So you can see how much bigger, how much taller, how much thicker this K2 is compared to the K7 here. And then we're gonna do another comparison. This is my first generation Apple wireless keyboard. This is definitely a low profile keyboard. I'm gonna show another angle, doing, doing another comparison angle from a lot lower. So you'll see how low profile it is, but they're, pretty much very different types of keyboards here. You can see how much thinner, at least the uh, front side is uh, with the Apple keyboard. Of course, they put all the batteries and everything in the back here, but it's kind of a nice keyboard, but I definitely like the feel of typing on the K7 itself instead of the Apple keyboard. Okay, so here's a little bit of a size comparison between these three keyboards. You have the different profiles here actually. You have the Apple keyboard, which is, has the lowest profile. 
then you have the K7, and then the K2. So let me move the Apple keyboard out of the way here. One of the things when I got this K2 is I realized this is very uncomfortable here. It's so high up. So I needed to get one of these wrist rests here, and it was the kind of the perfect size for it. But when I got this K7 in the mail, I realized this wrist rest wasn't going to work for it because it's too high. And then if I took it out and didn't use a wrist rest at all, since it's low profile, right? Uh, it still wasn't that comfortable. It's a little bit high for my taste. So then I had to get this new wrist pad, uh, the different size, and it worked perfectly. So I'll link this in the description below. But that's one thing to note is you're really going to have to find the right comfort level for you. So you might have to get a wrist rest with a different height and make sure it's not too high for this K7. Now I can't use this with the Apple keyboard actually because this one is so low that it doesn't even require a wrist pad for this. And lastly, we'll do a little bit of a sound test here. Remember, these are the brown optical switches on a low profile keyboard. So I'm gonna to try to put the mic as close to the keyboard as possible. So here are the things I like about this keyboard. It's very well built. The flexibility of being able to switch from Mac to Windows is a plus, even though I'm all Mac these days. The typing feel of a low profile keyboard is awesome, especially if I'm really not doing any gaming these days. It has a very sleek design and it matches my desk setup very well. I like the fact that I can easily switch between three different devices as well. There is one minor annoyance I have with this keyboard. This is very similar to what I experienced with the Key 2 as well. Uh, to save battery life, the keyboard goes to sleep after 10 minutes of inactivity. This is fine, and I like this as far as extending the battery life. You can turn off the auto sleep if you want to, but I choose to keep it in. The annoyance comes in when you try to wake up the keyboard. In the short time I've had this keyboard, I found that the keyboard sometimes takes a little bit longer to wake up. There are times where I have to where I had to press the keys a few times to actually wake up the keyboard. But this is a very minor annoyance. The last thing I'll talk about is having a 65% keyboard versus a 75% keyboard. This refers to the size and with the 65%, the numeric keys is usually combined with the media keys and the function keys. With the 75% keyboard, the media and function keys are usually separate from the numeric keys, which means I have access to those keys without pressing, pressing down the function key. Now this is a matter of preference, but I had to really get used to pressing down that function key to access those media keys, especially with the volume up and down keys. It's something that I can deal with and I'm, gonna get, I'm getting more used to it, so I need to get used to it over time, right? But it's just something I wanted to point out. The nice thing about having a 65% keyboard is that it looks very sleek and I would say, this is a keyboard that I can easily travel with. If I really wanted a 75% keyboard that is low profile, Keychron does make the K3 keyboard. Now, why would I recommend this keyboard? Well, if you're looking for a low profile keyboard that is super customizable, very well built, this is the keyboard for you. This is a very well built keyboard and it gives you the flexibility of using it via Bluetooth or USB, switching between Windows and Mac, and using it up to three different devices. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.